Good afternoon and welcome to the 23rd annual exhibit of hydrogen and fuel cell technologies and batteries. Uh, we're always discussing new innovations and great achievements in the industry. They're important because it moves us all forward. And we're always thrilled when a large player comes and joins us at this relatively small um, uh, exhibit in terms of international trade, it is small still. I'll be talking to Dr. Mutsuhiro Muriami, who's the Clean Energy Project Manager at Asai Kasei in Europe, and we'll be talking about the introduction to the Asai Kasei's large-scale electrolyzer. You can see part of it right over there, but it's too large to come on the stage. Please welcome with me Dr. Mutsuhiro Muriami uh, from Asai Kasei. So good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Brian, for the introduction. So, um, uh, Mutsiro, it's the first time you've been here, and I like to stress when large companies come to us, it's, it's a big statement. It's also a statement, uh, a commitment to the industry. The first thing we need to know, because you're here for the first time, is something about the company Asai Kasei, where you're located, its origins, its history, and where you are now. Yes, uh, we are basically a Japanese company. We are the second largest Japanese uh, chemical company. So we come, we came from Tokyo, Japan. And uh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you the uh, brief introduction of the company. The the employee number of the employees is about uh, thirty three thousand people around the globe, and the net sale is about uh, sixteen billion euro uh, in the year of two thousand sixteen. Oh, basically, uh, we are the chemical company, and the reasons we are here is that uh, we have been uh, a major supplier of the uh, chloralkali uh, electrolyzers, mm -hmm. uh, which produce uh, chlorine and uh, uh, sodium hydroxide. Those both both two chemicals are the very uh, important, very uh, very important chemicals which is needed for the chemical industries. So we are very proud that we have been working actually uh, with uh, European uh, chemical companies for a long time, over 40 years, mm -hmm. and we are now using that technologies. And uh, it's also the same electrochemistry. It's electrochemistry. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, water can be split into hydrogen and dioxygen. And of course, the, the interest of the audience is uh, green hydrogens. Uh, we, the, we, are, we see that the electrochemistry, uh, water electricity is the same thing for us. Uh, we have been working for the Croatia businesses and we have been successful in Europe. So we are very happy to be here. We'd like to contribute to provide the green hydrogens uh, to the European customers. I find it always interesting the uh, smaller companies don't have the material expertise, uh, they don't always have a, a group of specialists who do nothing but working on um, uh, the small components, uh, the catalysts, um, and with the chemical expertise that you have. And here you are uh, launching a large product. Um, was it easy to move from the core technologies you had into the alkali electrolysis industry? Was it easy? Did you have this on the shelf, the expertise? Yes, uh, that's a good point. Uh, we are uh, basically a chemical company and we, have, we, are, uh, we like to develop uh, catalysts, uh, membranes, and uh, actually, this is uh, in Japan, but we have uh, huge uh, scales of the uh, R&D facilities uh, where uh, many uh, researchers and developing persons in terms of the develop, uh, membranes and diaphragms and uh, catalysts. That's what we normally do. We like to do so. And uh, we, can, we, we have the capability to develop, develop the catalyst itself. So to, by developing, by increasing the cap efficiencies for the catalyst, of course, uh, the benefit for the customers is that uh, you can just consume less electricity. Mm -hmm. So it's also beneficial for the customers. Mm -hmm. And we are very uh, excited to do so. Mm -hmm. Our, we, ha we have uh, capabilities and uh, expertise for developing those kind of um, catalysts, membranes, and by, do, by developing them, uh, the customers will be beneficial. We are very happy to, mm -hmm. to see that things. This is the enviable advantage of large companies. They always have uh, things on the shelf they can add and uh, simply the resources of a large company. Uh, we're here, of course, to profile the um, alkali electrolysis unit that uh, 
uh, you have it partially on display here. When I say partially, I say this because some electrolysis units will fit on the stage. Uh, this is large. Now, why go large? <laughs> yes, that's a good question. Um, the, yes, actually, we are not good at so small one. Because, as I said, uh, we came from Coralco businesses. Uh, for the Coralco businesses, the customers always request us uh, more than tens of megawatt systems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, the maximum case about the 50 megawatt or 60 megawatt case. Mm -hmm. So we like that kind of scales. Mm -hmm. And by the reasons we like bigger system is that we can uh, reduce the cost of the uh, production of hydrogens, mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's a simple uh, economies, and um, so I think that the larger system will be uh, requested in the very near future uh, for the applications like refineries and or green methanol. Mm -hmm. uh, we are we like more for the industrial uh, applications, mm -hmm. and that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we say large, uh, uh, people are very proud to present units of one megawatt. Uh, this is like, for the PEM industry, that is sort of a, an, an upper level uh, standard. Uh, what size of the alkali um, uh, unit you have here? What is that? What, uh, two megawatts, three megawatts? Yes, uh, we have two systems, actually. Uh, one is a um, 0 0.5 megawatt system for the customers who uh, we'd like to use a system for the uh, transportation sectors, uh, hydrogen bus, uh, whatever. And the other one is a uh, 10 megawatt system as a single unit. Uh, it's a single unit system. And I think this is uh, one of the largest system for the uh, water uh, spreading uh, uh, hydrogen generation equipments. And so I will say that 10 megawatt is uh, uh, a unit which we can provide to the customers. Mm -hmm. Often when I'm talking here on the stage, the fuel cell industry is a very purist industry. We like clean air. Um, it's interesting to note also your company has a dedication to environmental uh, interests, uh, to health, uh, to other aspects, lifestyle, and so on. So uh, there is uh, overlap there. But the purists in this industry, they like to talk about renewable hydrogen. Um, and this is why we often refer to renewable energy as a source of electricity uh, for splitting the molecule, splitting the water molecule. That presents uh, certain challenges. That is, uh, the renewable energies have these fluctuations that you cannot always predict. Um, uh, either the sun is shining or it isn't, you have the wind energy that is unstable, sometimes there's too much of it and there's not enough, we need to store it and hydrogen is the solution. I'm saying all this because there's a debate about which technologies are more efficient when we try to capture the optimum quantity of renewable energies. And what I mean by that is uh, some people would say, oh, the PEM cells do a wonderful uh, job uh, because it has a short response time. Okay, so there's one issue, uh, does the alkali um, uh, electrolysis unit that you provide respond quickly to changes in energy? Uh, the second thing, of course, which we could talk about is durability. Uh, and I think the third thing beyond efficiency is the total cost of plant. So let's talk about, first of all, the quick response times. Here I am with renewable energy, I want to plug it into your alkali unit. Does that work? Yes, it works. And we have uh, confirmed uh, how the, our electrolysis can be uh, operated with a fluctuating input. Uh, we have been working in Japan. Um, uh, it's like a demonstration, and uh, we borrowed some simulated uh, powers of the wind, and our uh, electrolysis can perfectly uh, adapt the fluctuations. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And you asked me that the uh, durabilities. Mm -hmm. Yes, when we when it comes to the durability, uh, I believe that uh, alkaline technology is uh, uh, well established. One and also we have confirmed that uh, we can we could see uh, more than uh, ten thousand hours uh, no degradations mm -hmm. in the past. And I believe that our system can be uh, operated for ten years. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the basic understanding at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more stable, uh, more durable uh, compared with the PEM system, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Often when I'm talking on the stage, people present um, uh, uh, new products. They're referring to R&D, though, sometimes, let's be honest. Um, things that have not been tested. You're already a major supplier of technology, so how far along the uh, production change are you? Is it marketable right now, your alkali electrolysis unit? Um, you, you are a big supplier right now, aren't you? A major supplier of electrolysis technology. So how's the production going? Um, how are the sales going? And um, uh, what goals for 2018 and beyond? Uh, the good point for us is that, uh, as I said, um, we are uh, we came we are here uh, coming from the chloroalkali businesses, mm -hmm. and uh, um, fortunately we can use that factories to do, do uh, manufacture our electrolyzers. But it, this is in Japan, but uh, we don't see any difficulties uh, to deploy our systems to the market. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now uh, we have we have finished the demonstration stage in Japan. And we are now uh, we are ready for the marketing. And also we have started some demonstrations in also in Europe, mm -hmm. because uh, some regulations uh, is different. Uh, you know, this this is about the safety regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we uh, we have to comply with all the regulations in Europe, mm -hmm. and that's what we have been doing. Uh, now, uh, so but anyway, we are very ready uh, for the market, and if the customers are request us to deploy some systems, uh, we are happy to do so. Uh, we started the conversation by talking about um, uh, your company, Asai Kasei, as a Japanese company, of course, which it is, uh, but you're a European. You set up shop here in Dresden, <laughs> so uh, uh, I believe in 2016. So uh, first of all, welcome to Europe, of course, but as a new European, um, uh, what motivated the move to Europe? Um, and um, uh, what sort of activities do you plan specifically for your branch? It, and this is the European branch of uh, the Japanese company. So why Europe and what are you going to do here? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Um, yes, uh, you know, uh, Europe is uh, a world leader in terms of the environmental issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and European people uh, have been uh, thinking how, what we should do to protect Earth. So we appreciate so much. And of course, uh, I think that Europe is the first uh, place that ki this kind of uh, environmental hydrogen business will emerge. Mm. And so that's the reason we have established uh, European headquarters in Dusseldorf, as you mentioned, 2016, mm. and we came here. And the other motivation is about automotive industries. Uh, automotive and hydrogen is closely related, so I think it's the best price uh, for us, for uh, we are Japanese companies, uh, but uh, I think that Europe is more advanced and good, better price to work mm -hmm. with. So we are looking for uh, European partners to work with, and we'd like to you know, improve our, imp we'd like to improve our systems more. Mm -hmm. That's a motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, when you compare the two locations, um, I'm not sure if there's different uh, uh, features and different advantages in the two locations. Speaking from the German perspective, we have this huge resource of renewable energy, the wind turbines in the north, and the only problem is we can't store them. Uh, I was speaking this morning with a, um, uh, a professor of uh, physical chemistry uh, who basically said there is no option hydrogen production through electrolysis is the only technology available uh, to store gigawatts of power from the north. So there's a business model for electrolysis. Um, there's also the pressures, the environmental pressures here. Uh, that is, several cities in Germany, uh, they really have to stop the traffic by law, according to European legislation, because of um, several factors. Usually it's the pollutants coming from cars. In uh, Japan, you have the envious situation of uh, mass-produced hydrogen vehicles. Um, so here you're ahead of us and we all envy that because um, as soon as you move into mass pr production, it's the economies of scale, that car becomes more affordable everywhere in the world. But for the electrolysis issue, um, energy storage here is the big thing. Uh, potentially automotive transportation in Japan, where is the larger market for your alkali electrolysis units? 
is it comparable in size, Japan or Europe or? Okay. Uh, yes, we have to tell you that the situation of Japan is completely different from that of Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, Japanese government is thinking that they will import hydrogens, huge amount of hydrogen from outside of Japan. It's unfortunate that in Japan the renewables uh, like wind powers are not abundant. Mm -hmm. We don't have a steady, uh, strong winds yep. from the west. Uh, so that's the reason that we have very limited amount of the renewables. Mm -hmm. So I think that Europe, oh, especially as you mentioned, the northern part of Europe is the best place uh, that where the, uh, this kind of electrolyzers can uh, contribute mm -hmm. you know, to store the energies, mm -hmm. uh, otherwise which, should, which will be discarded, but uh, by electrolysis the hydrogen uh, can be produced with uh, uh, um, wind powers and the hydrogen is a very uh, st uh, stable molecules and it can be stored for a, a couple of months without any problem. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, Europe is better place uh, in terms of the uh, green hydrogens uh, when we compare, we, when we have to compare with the situation of Japan. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. And it's, of course, not to diminish the industrial need for hydrogen, uh, but we here all have this notion that the big boom in electrolysis that we've seen over the past three years is going to continue to be driven by renewable energy. And where would we be without companies like yours? So it's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, I've been talking to Dr. Mutsuhiro Muriyami, who's the Clean Energy Project Manager at Asai Kase in Europe. Um, I'd like to remind everyone that tomorrow in the afternoon, beginning at um, uh, uh, three in the afternoon, there's going to be an electrolysis elevator pitch. All the various manufacturers are going to be discussing their technologies one after e the other. And again, it's an opportunity to profile your technology. Um, alkali electrolysis seems to be incoming. Um, uh, and it's a question of scale. So uh, do join us there. Otherwise, further questions should be addressed to the booth at C69, which is just behind me. Um, we're thrilled that we've managed to acquire your company at this uh, fair. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you here, and we hope you come back next year. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you. <laughs> and thank all of you for listening. Um, I'd like to add that we'll be back on stage in a few minutes for a podium discussion on cross-industry approach to developing hydrogen mobility. Um, and uh, again, thank my guest, Dr. Musuhiro Muriyami, Clean Energy Project Manager at Asai Kasei from Europe. Thank you. The drinks are on the house. Stay seated. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs>